the temperature of a gas is proportional to its kinetic energy. Okay, what this is saying is that um, uh, th as the temperature increases, okay, uh, if you if you think of the the gas um, in the context of the kinetic molecular theory, all right, that's where um, we're we're looking at the particles of the gas and how they're moving around okay that's the kinetic molecular kinetic is the motion of the molecules or particles of the gas um, that's where why we call it the kinetic molecular theory um, but anyway in that context temperature um, is related to or proportional to the energy involved in the motion of those particles all right. How much energy is uh, in the motion of the particles of the gas as they're bouncing around? So when you heat it up, you have more energy. It doesn't necessarily mean um, that, uh, that at a given temperature any gas is going to be going the same speed. It, it, it's not because it's the kinetic energy, not the velocity of the gas okay that is proportional to the temperature all right but uh, any gas um, you know if it's bouncing around at one speed and you heat it up it is going to get faster all right but it doesn't mean that another gas that is at that same temperature is going to be going just as fast okay and let's uh, look at that a bit more the kinetic energy is uh, we know from physics is equal to one half times the mass times the velocity squared okay um, one half mv squared that is how we calculate the kinetic energy of the uh, of a gas particle okay or, or any um, object for that matter all right so we see here the mass component is factored in as well as its speed or velocity okay so the kinetic energy is not just about the velocity but also the mass of the gas okay so what this means is if you have a heavier uh, gas one that has a larger mass it doesn't have to be going as fast to have the same kinetic energy okay and it's that kinetic energy that's proportional to the temperature so say for example I have uh, two containers of, uh, of a gas one is hydrogen gas the other one is argon gas All right. which one of these is the heavier gas well, certainly the argon is much heavier than the hydrogen. Hydrogen has a, uh, a molar mass of 2 grams per mole because there's two hydrogen atoms there, roughly 2 grams per mole. Whereas argon has a molar mass of about 40 grams per mole. Okay, If you look that up on the periodic table, you will... Uh, you'll find that information. So it's about 20 times heavier than the hydrogen. So if I have 20 times the mass, all right, my same kinetic energy, I, I don't have to have as much v velocity in order to get the same kinetic energy. So these ones, they'll be bouncing around slowly, all right, whereas these ones will be going around very uh, very fast okay they're bouncing around very vigorously um, to have the same kinetic energy or the same temperature okay if these are both at the same temperature the hydrogen molecules they're bouncing around much faster than the argon because the argon atoms are much heavier than the hydrogen molecules 
okay? All based on this kinetic energy um, having that mass component in there, okay? Now, there's uh, one uh, relationship that we can uh, use to um, uh, do some calculations with this. Um, we could use this one as well, but um, uh, in the context, if we combine this with the uh, gas law, the ideal gas equation, PV equals nRT, all right, I won't go through the de derivation of that, but uh, we have essentially what you could think of as the average speed of the um, particles, okay? Um, and I say speed, but uh, it's really in, uh, the velocity. The difference between speed and velocity is that speed is just how fast it's going, whereas velocity, it includes direction as well. So if it's going this way, it doesn't have the same velocity as if it's going that way, even though they might be going the same speed. Okay, um, so that's just a technicality there, but uh, it's actually the average velocity of the particles. Um, and uh, we can calculate that average velocity um, as the square root of 3 times r times the temperature divided by the molar mass. All right. So um, this average speed of the particles, it's not the same type of average that we normally uh, think of. It's what we call the root mean square. Okay. Um, and it has the symbol uh, U. Um, often with that RMS, okay, for root mean square. Okay, so this is, it's just a, a different type of, uh, of average. Um, uh, the way it, what it actually means is if it's the mean of the square, so if you take the, uh, the velocity, you square that, and then you average this would be the the velocity of each individual particle okay so each particle of gas it might be move this one might be moving slowly whereas this one is moving very quickly and then you know different uh directions and whatnot um, you take the velocity of each one of those and you square it okay and then you average the squares of all those velocities and then you take the square root of all of that. That is the root mean square. So it's, you can see, I mean, the square root of the square um, is just the, the mean part of it in there. Um, anyway, it gives you an average uh, estimate of the um, velocity of the particles. Okay. And Here's our mass component. We use the molar mass of the gas, and we factor in the temperature and the gas constant as well. And uh, using this, we can determine which uh, of a, you know of a gas might be going uh, faster. Okay. Um, for example, um, this is a, a demonstration that you can do. Uh, if you take a tube, right, and you uh, introduce, say, uh, one gas on on one side. Let's let's say you put in uh, hydrogen chloride gas. Okay, not the the acid which would be in water, but just HCl gas. Um, you put that in on one side, and on the other side you put in ammonia vapor. Okay, so two gases on two different ends of a long tube. Okay, and then you uh, 
um, let that sit and pretty soon you know they're going to migrate in the middle and they will react okay hydrochloric acid, or rather HCl hydrogen chloride gas will react with ammonia uh, vapor to form ammonium chloride this is a solid and it will form a little white uh, ring in the tube um, wherever those two gases meet so the question is is it going to meet are they going to meet right in the middle or closer to one side or the other and the answer is in the root mean square velocity okay so um, if you plug in your your value for r and the uh, temperature and the molar mass uh, for <clears throat> each gas um, you can uh, actually calculate the average velocity of those particles and basically the heavier the gas is the slower it's going to go. Larger value in the denominator means it's going to reduce the average velocity. Okay, just like we saw uh, before, the heavier um, argon moves more slowly than the lightweight hydrogen. Okay, so if you look at the molar mass of these gases, HCl. Um, its molar mass is going to be about uh, 36.5 grams per mole. And the molar mass of ammonia is, uh, that would be 14 and 3, is about 17 grams per mole. So just about half the, uh, the mass, which means that the ammonia is moving much more quickly than the HCl, right? And in fact, if you do this, what you find is that they meet a little bit over toward the HCl side. That's where you begin to see the ring of, uh, of white solid ammonium chloride forming in that tube. Okay, because um, the, uh, the ammonia vapor travels faster than the HCl. And so it doesn't meet in the middle, it meets closer toward the, uh, the slower gas. Based strictly on the uh, molar mass of those gases, the heavier one moves more slowly than does the, uh, the lighter gas.